Hello, my name is Jesse Thomas and I am from the University of Illinois Chicago College of Nursing. Um, I will be presenting a webinar regarding the introduction to the Olmstead Consent Decrees in Illinois for the MCO Care Coordinator. The objectives that we will be covering include reviewing social movements, advancing deinstitutionalization in the United States, discussing federal law and the impact on institutionalization, introducing the Olmstead Consent Decrees in, in Illinois, identifying the role of a person-centered strength-based approach within the consent decrees, and identifying additional resources for learning. For the timeline, federal legislation included from 1973, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act, which established disability as a protected category. In 1990, the Americans with Disabilities Act was signed into law, also known as ADA, and in 1999, the Olmstead decision was made. The Olmstead consent decrees in Illinois include the Williams consent decree, which was approved in September of 2010, the Ligas Consent Decree, which was approved June of 2011, and the Colbert Consent Decree, which was approved December of 2011. The historical era review includes that institutional practices grew rapidly in the United States from the 1800s to the 1900s. Almost half a million people with physical and mental disabilities lived in institutions by 1967. And by the 1960s, the disability rights movements emerged. The independent living movement, also known as ILM, is a movement and a philosophy that emphasizes peer support, access to choice, removal of barriers to choice, consumer control, presumed competence, dignity of risk, interdependence, disability leadership, and community integration. Key federalization includes, le legislation includes the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, the Americans with Disability Act of 1990, and the Olmstead Supreme Court decision of 1999. The Rehabilitation Act of 1973 established a disability as a protected category. It required access to programs funded by the federal government or conducted by a federal agency and it set the stage for the passage of the American Dis with Disabilities Act in 1990. The Americans with Disability Act in 1990 prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability. Title II of the ADA requires public entities to administer services, programs, and activities in the most integrated setting appropriate to the needs of qualified individuals with disabilities. This is called the integration mandate. The Olmstead Supreme Court decision in 1999 included in 95, Lois Curtis had challenged her confinement at a Georgia regional hospital in Atlanta based on the Title II of the ADA. Elaine Wilson joined the case in 1996 of January as well. And in 1999, the Supreme Court ruled the unnecessary institutionalization of people with disabilities is discrimination under the ADA. The Olmstead Consent Decrees in Illinois includes the Ligas Consent Decree, Williams Consent Decree, and the Colbert Consent Decree. The Ligas Consent Decree includes individuals with intellectual disabilities, the Williams Consent Decree includes individuals with serious mental illness residing in specialized mental health rehabilitation facilities. And the Colbert Consent Decree includes individuals with disabilities re residing in nursing facilities in Cook County. The background of the Ligas Consent Decree included in which Ligas versus Eagleson lawsuit was filed in 2005. The alleged, the alleged the state failed to provide services in most integrated setting appropriate for individuals residing in ICF, DDs, or in their homes and seeking community-based services. 
and it alleged violations of the Title II of the ADA, the Community Integration Mandate, as well as Section 504 of the Rehab Act and Title 19 of the Social Security Act. Ligus class members include adults with developmental disabilities who qualify for Medicaid home and community-based services, also referred to as 1915 waiver services, and reside in an ICFDD or reside in a family home and are in need of community-based services or placement in a community-based setting, and affirmatively request to receive community-based services or placement in a community-based setting. Promoting Community Integration. DHS Division of Developmental Disabilities leads the implementation with HSF, HFS. The individuals are based and selected from the PUNS list to initiate and enter into the community-based services. Immediately, it serves individuals in crisis, working to transition them into appropriate services and supports. The independent service coordination agencies work to, with individuals currently receiving or waiting for services, providing person-centered planning with an understanding of the individual's wants, needs, and desired outcomes, as well as transition to new and or different services, including community day services, home-based service programs, and CELA services. An example of a LIGAS class member, Brady. Brady is a 50-year-old male Medicaid recipient residing in an ICFDD, Shining Star Developmental Center. Brady is diagnosed with profound intellectual disability, GERD, and generalized seizure disorder. He lived with his parents until he, they were no longer able to provide for his needs, and Brady and his brother Cody are interested in exploring community options. Brady has expressed an interest in moving to, close to a CELA, close to his brother Cody, to gain more independence. Brady's initial plan of action include the Hope House, which is a CELA close to Cody, and has accepted Brady for admission. The Hope House staff will assist Brady with medication management for his GERD and seizure disorder. The care manager partners with Brady and Cody to build self-management skills. The care manager also ensures Brady has a PCP dentist and neurologist in the community and helps Brady schedule appointments. Brady and Cody are educated on additional community resources. The Williams Consent Decree included a lawsuit of Williams versus Pritzker, which was filed in 2005. It alleged that people with serious mental illness are unnecessarily confined in IMDs, now classified as SMURFs. Alleged violations of Title II of the ADA and Section 504 of the Rehab Act. The Williams class members must meet all of the following, including being medical, Medicaid eligible adults with a mental illness, residing in a SMURF in Illinois, and able to live in the community with right services and supports. The Colbert Consent Decree included a lawsuit of Colbert versus Pritzker that was filed in 2007. It alleged that individuals with disabilities were being unnecessarily institutionalized in nursing facilities in Cook County. The alleged violations included Title II of the ADA, Section 504 of the Rehab Act, and the Social Security Act. Colbert class members must meet all of the following, including Medicaid-eligible adults with disabilities, residing in a nursing facility in Cook County, and able to live in a community-based setting with, rights, with the right services and supports. The Division of Mental Health of DHS leads implementation of both the Williams and Colbert consent decrees in partnership with HFS and the Department of Public Health. DHS has established the Comprehensive Class Member Transition Program for community integration for Williams and Colbert class members. And HFS's Community Transitions Initiative also provides a path to community integration, but is available to all nursing facilities and SMURF residents and is not limited to Williams and Colbert class members. These initiatives share many goals, but operate distinctively, distinctly from one another. UIC College of Nursing provides cross-program coordination to ensure access to required services while minimizing duplication of effort. 
The Comprehensive Class Member Transition Program, or CCMTP, includes that the DHS DMH issues grants to prime agencies to provide transition services to all Colbert and Williams class members, including outreach, assessment, evaluation, service planning, transition activities, and community-based services. This is the state's default program for meeting the requirements of the Williams and consent decrees. CCMTP has 13 agencies referred to as prime agencies who are responsible for all services related to transitioning class members to the community from outreach to community supports. Prime agencies are assigned to facilities with Colbert and William consent decrees, and some prime agencies are community mental health centers, while others are not. The Community Transitions Initiative, or CTI, include HFS, who engages Medicaid managed care organizations, MCOs, to provide the following services to their enrollees who reside in SMURFs and nursing facilities. And this includes outreach assessment, evaluation service planning, transition activities, and linkage to community services. Community-based behavioral services for class members include many class members with serious mental health illness and they need intensive community-based services. And different types of providers include community mental health centers and behavioral health clinics. Providers for a range of community-based services include assertive, community treatment, community support team, medication administration, and many more. Not all providers offer the same community-based services, but not all CMHCs offer ACT. The level and types of services is based on the class member needs. Class members have the freedom to choose their mental health provider. If the class member is engaged with the prime agency that is the CMHC, the class member may receive CMHC services from that specific CMHC. Alternately, they may be referred to another provider for services while the prime agency remains responsible for the CCMTP processes. If the class member is engaged with the prime agency that is not a CMHC or is working with their Medicaid managed care plan under the CTI, the class member will be connected to community-based mental health providers as appropriate for needed services. An example of a Williams class member includes Riley, who is a 29-year-old male Medicaid recipient who's residing at Sunshine Ridge, a Smurf. Riley is diagnosed with schizophrenia, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, GERD, and obesity. After high school, he worked as a carpenter for several years, and his symptoms of mental illness increased in which he became homeless. He was admitted to Sunshine Ridge following a hospitalization three years ago in which Riley is interested in moving into an apartment in the community and working again. So his initial plan of action would include reviewing Riley's current treatment plan, which includes medication review, using funds from a bridge subsidy, and identifying and securing appropriate housing in the community, referring Riley to a CMHC for ACT services, medication management, and budgeting assistance. And the care manager partners with Riley, Sunshine Ridge, and the CMHC to build self-management skills for community living and condition management. The care manager ensures Riley has a psychiatrist, PCP, dentist, and will evaluate if a cardiologist is needed. And Riley is linked to an employment specialist and educated on additional community resources. Example of a Colbert class member, Wren. Wren is a 55-year-old female Medicaid recipient residing at Moon Ridge Nursing and Rehab. Wren is diagnosed with diabetes, renal failure, hypertension, depression, and anxiety, in which she has a history of a stroke with residual paraplegia. She was a former grocery store clerk, and she lived with her sister until it was her stroke five years ago. Wren would like to leave the nursing facility, but is certain, uncertain if she can live alone. The initial plan of action would include Wren's health status and medication are reviewed, and until further assessment and discussion, Wren is requesting to move to a supportive living program to gain more independence. The SLP staff will assist Wren with medication management and functional support, and the care manager works with Wren and partners with the nursing facility to build self-management skills. Their care manager ensures a dialysis center and transportation is secured, as well as PCP, dentist, endocrinology, neurology, nephrology, physical therapy, and psychiatry. Wren has also provided education on additional community services. Care management with Olmstead. 
Care managers are in a unique position to assist individuals to reach their full potential, a focus on individual needs, strengths, and preferences and goals over a one-size-fits-all approach. And needs, strengths, and preferences and goals are often changed over time. This requires ongoing assessment and adjustments to care plans and services. The care management process is an ongoing process and it involves engagement, assessment, planning, implementation, monitoring, and evaluations. This process helps the care manager identify and adapt to the individual strengths, challenges, preferences, and goals. Client center focused and includes individual strengths, challenges, preferences, and goals, which are central for each plan. Resources and supports are built around the individual to be, to be successful in the community. Core care management activities include coaching and teaching, assessing, planning, development, developing, implementing, monitoring, evaluating, collaborating, arranging, advocating, development of self-management, medication management, and referrals. In summary, the rights and supports for individuals with disabilities have been evolving for decades, and Illinois has three Olmstead consent decrees, and the care managers can help individuals live at their full potential using available resources. Tips for MCO care coordinators include using your resources and seeking out additional training opportunities, Reaching out to your supervisor, your health plan's long-term services and supports manager with any questions about the specific consent decrees or working with class members. And further information can be found on our UIC CUN website, as well as emailing the about CTI processes or transition discharge questions to UIC CUN help desk directly and we can better support you. Any questions specifically about policy or Olmstead consent decrees can also be directed to HFS for assistance.